Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Line Mentality by Line Pro, the show where we talk to lineman people about lineman things. I'm Alex Lennon Cole, aka Coach Lenny. Today we're here with Taryn Jones, who is a local coach with us here at Line Pro. So he was able to come down here in person. Some of the interviews we do are going to be remote, some of them in person. Lucky to have you here today. Good Taryn, to here. Uh, yes, why don't you tell us? Uh, about your background in football starting in high school and then going through uh, your uh, diverse career uh, okay. through college in the NFL. All right. Um, I graduated in 2009, played college football at Alabama State from 2009 to 2013, and then bounced around from a few teams for 2013 all the way to 2015, right. the latter part of 2015. And so you were with the? Falcons, Titans. Bills, Ravens, and Redskins. Very All good. over like two and a half, three years. I love it. So let's go back to that 2009. Mm -hmm. you come from high school. Come from high uh, school. You're from Florida, right? Florida. All right. So what city? Uh, Fort Walton Beach. Okay. It's the Panhandle. And you're six foot seven. Six eight. Six eight. Yeah. Right? Back Is then that I a roster six eight? I was a true six eight. True six true eight. Six, right. There's that big difference, you know, yeah. especially nowadays. It's getting Everybody's worse and worse. Everybody's wanting that extra inch or whatever. Yeah. Or there's, half inch. There was a few times where I put 6'3 mm -hmm. on things during, <laughs> during yeah, you can, he's laughing at me, uh, but during high school, during recruiting, uh -huh. because everybody else is lying, uh -huh. you know, I'd see a guy be 6'5", and then we'd go get measured in at a camp, and he'd come in at 6'3 and a half, <laughs> you know, so I was like 6'1 and a half, 6'2", so I was a roster 6'3", yeah, so sure. I feel like when you get above 6'6", six, six, it kind of just turns into no man's land, yep. you know, a guy will be 6'8", you don't see too many guys... <laughs> Taller than that because no. now it's almost like six nine, six ten. That's you're playing basketball. Or yeah, you, you're yeah. saving you're your a body tall, a little yeah, bit. For sure. <laughs> but uh, but being six eight, when did you really grow? Were you were you tall as an eighth grader? No. All there's a couple guys that uh, were in my same grade. They were always taller than me, all through like up until like tenth grade, and mm -hmm. then summer between tenth and eleventh grade, I like shot up like two or three inches. And then I was taller than all of them. So I wasn't like always like super tall. And I didn't always play football. Yeah. I was you didn't always play football. When no, did you I start? I used to skateboard while I That's played right. football in high school. Or not in high school, but middle school. Right. So I kind of did both of those. And then I started getting heavier and started breaking boards all the time. <laughs> so I just was like, all right, I'm done playing so or I'm done skateboarding. Got too expensive yeah. to keep skateboarding. My parents were like, we're not going to keep buying you boards if you keep breaking them. <laughs> were they supportive of you playing football? Yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah. Very like, good. do whatever you want. You're like, whatever makes you happy. Nice. You know, that's, we're here that's for That's great. Yeah. I love that. So, you, when did you start? In seventh grade, eighth grade? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Didn't do Little League or none of that. Were your friends playing at that point? Uh, I was, before that, I was a skateboarder. So, I was hanging out with all the skateboarder kids, like, you know, and then just kind of like slowly went into football in seventh grade. Do you think that I mean, a, a lot of kids these days will longboard and skateboard? I've noticed just from working with a lot of kids mm -hmm. that when I do get somebody who either surfed or skateboard or snowboard, that they've got a pretty natural balance. Do yeah. you think that skateboarding helped you? Yeah, it did for sure. Yeah, because that's it it's not a recommendation a for you guys to go take up skateboarding <laughs> yeah, necessarily. Don't do that. <laughs> but when you're, you know, if you are a parent who has a kid who likes to longboard and skateboard, you know, obviously it's a good there's foundation. inherent risks, yeah. but it, it helped a lot with my bend and uh, my waist and just my flexibility. And uh, yeah, it helped me over time for sure. I never skateboarded a day in my life, uh, but I was playing football from third or fourth grade, yeah. you know, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. But uh, I do not, you know, big men fall hard. Yeah, they and do. And I was big always. Maybe <laughs> not really tall, hard. But, but chubby. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so then you got into high school. When did you know that you wanted to be serious about football? When did you decide that you were going to put your foot in the ground and become a college football player? Uh, Probably. When I had my growth spurt going into my junior year, uh, there were a couple guys a grade ahead of me who were, you know, college prospects and stuff like that. And then they were like, you, you could be a good football player. Like, you should really think about doing this. And then I was like, all right, well, all my coaches are like telling me this is what I should do. My parents were like, that'd be a good thing. You can get your school paid for. And I was like, all right. So I did that. And then just from then on, it was football. Yeah. Was Don't there any coaches or teachers too that kind of, guided you through that, helped you get there? Uh, one coach in particular, Danny Williams, he uh, played defensive line at Florida a long time ago. This big old, old guy, kind of senile, but uh, <laughs> he was a good coach and he was our weightlifting coach too. And um, 
that also helped a lot too, him being a weightlifting coach. He uh, really was about like technique. Like we probably did hand cleans and power cleans more than any other lift throughout the week because that's what he was just all about, like power cleans and explosion and stuff like that. So he was a big uh, a big influence. Yeah. yeah. When you're when you're a tall tackle, you got so much body, you know, we I've worked with a lot of guys, we've worked with a lot of guys mm -hmm. who come through and they're just so lengthy, mm -hmm. you know, and it's great. Yeah. Every shorter kid wishes they were taller. But those tall guys do have to overcome balance, bending and bending, yeah. strength, explosiveness, explosiveness, and those yeah. those lifts are so important. Mm -hmm. So that's really huge. Um, so let's talk about recruiting. You ended up at Alabama State. Mm -hmm. Did you have other offers? Uh, How did it come to be that you ended up there? Well, I was getting a lot of interest from like Southern Miss, a lot of the Conference USA schools. East Carolina offered me. Um, Ball State had offered me, but then they took their offer back. And then I like qualified late with some classes mm. or with a with a math class. And um, the time it took for them to, you know, look into that class and see if the it was, you know. Gonna work. Good, gonna work for Clearinghouse. They were like, we we were if we still want you, we'd gray shirt you. And I was like, nah, I'm trying to play now. And Alabama State was like, you can come in, you can play now. Right. So I was like, all right, bet. So I went to Alabama State and played immediately. Nice. As soon as I got in, I was a guard at first, but transitioned in and tackle. They're like, you're gonna be our tackle next year. Just play guard here now. Cool. I think that's interesting because I do see schools do that a lot, like take an obvious tackle and mm -hmm. make him play guard. Mm -hmm. And I think the move there, just from a coach's standpoint now, you know, and both of us coach, mm -hmm. uh, I've coached for teams, you're pretty fresh out of the league. Mm -hmm. So we really come from things from a player's perspective, but it's interesting to think from a coach's mind now. Uh, for me, throwing a guy at guard really can teach him to, to deal in small spaces mm -hmm. and be more explosive yeah. when you have all that body to get you it bring into it that all tight in space. To, you know, I guess like a four foot. Square. Yeah, that little and spot. That's, you just work in there. You got somebody here. You got somebody there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a phone booth. Yeah. Compared to phone booth. That was on the space yeah, island. That's what they would describe it as a phone booth. Did you find that helped you yeah, uh, to did. be a better tackle? Yeah. Helped me bend a lot more because yeah. I couldn't be like in a tackle stance at guard. Right. So, and it just worked with like my awareness, I guess you could say, looking left and looking right and just communication. If you had to play an NFL game right now, would you rather play guard or tackle? Guard. Guard. So yeah. it's easier to play guard. <laughs> it's easier to play guard. Yeah. For sure, because these ends now are just getting like freakish. True. It's crazy seeing True. those guys out there on the edge. Just Yeah. Who are some guys you went against that you know that we might know? Uh Terrell Suggs, uh OCU Manura, Mario Williams, yeah. uh Trent Murphy, Ryan Kerrigan, Brian Arakpo. All those guys. Pretty much crazy. just all those premier defensive ends. I either played with them or against them. Yeah. It was who, who was the best one you played against in a game? Probably Jason Pierre-Paul. Yeah. yeah. How'd that go? Not good. <laughs> I ended up getting fined that game. Oh, really? Yeah. So what, the fine? Was that like um, by like the... The, the league. The league office. Oh, started. really? Yeah. What, for having your jersey untucked? No, nah, for slapping him in the face on the oh. inside move. Like, wow. I was kicking. Well, I was on the right side. I was kicking back, and he like jabbed super hard and went across the middle, and yeah. I like stuck my hand up like this. Multiple times or just... Once? Just one time. And then you got a fine. How much is a fine? Uh, close to like my whole paycheck. What? And at the time, it was like... Thirteen thousand dollars. Thirteen k. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even get paid that week, so. Wow. So you had to go a whole week without getting paid for one. But they play. didn't like take it until like later. Yeah. Yeah. That's brutal. So. That's that's, that's not quite fun. a story. Brutal, man. Against the best guy you ever go against. You're the best guy ever. You're doing whatever you can do to win. Yeah. And you lose the whole and game. And I lose check. the whole game check for that. But uh, funny. I, I ended up many. playing a good game though. Yeah. For I mean, we still lost, but for what it's worth. If you go back and just watch my film, I played a pretty yeah. decent game. I wonder if they're just ever like short on the budget and they're like, "Hey, we need to save some money." Right? They're like, "Uh, find some young guys just find and just find them for <laughs> just pick some plays." Yeah, it was because I would I didn't know that that would really happen. I didn't like play oh, you know, happens, real regular season games like that. That's crazy. Didn't know that. So let's take it back then. You you got to um, to Alabama State. You're a freshman, a true freshman. Did you redshirt? Did you not? True freshman was. Just like, a, I mean, I just was so uh, uh, ready to go, I guess. Like, um, my dad, I went home for Christmas. My dad said that he had met one of my coaches 
towards my sophomore year, and he was like, yeah. He's like, you got a good kid, but he loves to fight. Because I was getting fights with, like, all my teammates. You were? Yeah, in like a lot of the older guys. Yeah. Just because I just wouldn't take nothing from them. I didn't let them talk to me any certain So were they way. starting it because they were hating on you, or were you starting it because you were just wanting to cause problems and break things? Kind of it both. was kind of like both. Yeah. Like, I remember one fight specifically was because one of the seniors wanted to sit in the front seat of the car. And I was like, no, I'm not getting out the front seat. <laughs> and he, like, gets out the car and, like, tries to pull me out. And I was right. like, nah, nah, beep, 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 beep. Like, yeah. busted his lip. We go into practice the next day. And the offensive line coach is like, what the hell happened to you? And then I'm just sitting over there like, yeah. Wow. So You know, it's it's really, it's you, you wish... My attitude has always been, I'm just not a fighting person. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't like, I don't really believe in violence when it comes to people having disagreements and arguments. I think people should be able to talk things out. But there is, when it comes to high level football, oh, yeah. there's an atmosphere <laughs> of fighting. And there's a bunch of other guys watching. You don't yeah. want to just like, it's you got to show them who you got to. And I think that part of the reason when I got cut, when I was with the Bears in camp, I feel that the guy they kept, they liked him because he would get in fights and stuff. Mm. And so it's it's part of, you know, for me, talking to the kids out there, talking to the parents, talking to the coaches, there is the world where it's almost supported. You, you, you'll have every year, you'll see a video pop up of some, some pro camp. Fighting. Some and fighting guys getting on. fights, and the coaches wait to break it up. It happens in the movies. Yeah. They let I it go just, a little bit. As long as it doesn't get, like, too crazy. They're for like, sure. We're let them fight. They got to get some right. of this out. But I just think for the future of football... That if it's like, look, like we support fighting, mm -hmm. uh, that it, it doesn't really work for everybody. And I think it should be what you do on the field, mm -hmm. right? I'm biased for what I believe. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think it's also okay for somebody to say, hey, this is this is what it is. Yeah, no, most of the times, like, the fights would only happen in, like, training camp. Yeah. Because that's, like, when you're fighting for a position. For sure. Tensions are high. Like, tensions are real high. It's hot outside. You want some water. And, mm -hmm. like, you're just, like, over it. Yeah. And then... You just snap and, and there's no fighting. referees. There's no, no, no referees. You know, yeah. uh, for me, anytime somebody came at me, it was like, and it wasn't like I scoured off. You know, like I didn't really ever get in true like fists, uh -huh. but um, but you know, we'd figure it out later, whatever. Uh, I made some guys miss. Oh you know, yeah, I was pretty. <laughs> I was pretty bendy. Yeah. But uh, but you know, if I accidentally held a guy or clipped a guy accidentally, what? But there's no referees to make those calls. Mm -hmm. So you do have to kind of keep your own ground. Yeah, you gotta. You know, someone gets hands <laughs> in the face, you might throw some fists, and it just happens. But I would advocate kids to to not yeah, go in for sure. Don't be fight. fighting. Don't, Don't go know, looking for a fight. That's good advice. Don't go looking for a fight. But when you get to college and you got the older guys and the younger guys, I noticed it. I vowed to kind of like help squash that by helping the younger guys, and I think it's why I'm doing line pro and starting all this because I want to help yeah. and, and be positive for the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when I was young, there were some pretty mean older guys, and I imagine that they were got kind of punked when they were young too. I just wasn't going to be the cycle. one to get punked. Exactly. That's just how it was. I was like, I don't care if you're yeah. five years older than me. I don't care if you're a senior. I was like, you're not going to talk to mm -hmm. me like that. Yeah, and honestly, that's that's one of your only options. It's either you kind of take it and just wear it, and then they're gone. And honestly, that is somewhat what happened to me at times. Yeah. You know, the, nobody. That's was, what you should do. They were kicking me out of the front seat, but you know, just. They're just being older guys. Yeah, you, you know? respect your, your your elders. And you should. Yeah. But then you came in. At some point, they were just being disrespectful. But you were playing. Wasn't. Yeah, I was playing. You didn't redshirt. Didn't redshirt. Didn't redshirt, and you went right onto the field. Yeah, so playing. I was kind of like, they were they were like, why they got this freshman out here? But I was yeah. doing, you know, I was holding holding, yeah. holding my own. You had every right to hold your ground. Exactly. Because they are just trying to punch you. It was you. justified. They're trying to establish the, the higher ground on you. So that's cool. But they were out there, they were on their way out of there anyway. This is their last <laughs> season. I was like, I'm about to take over this. This is yeah. about to be my team. Yeah. And that's what it and ended up being. Yeah. But at some point, unfortunately, was it spring ball you had an injury? That was my going into my junior year okay so you're spring you spring played year. two seasons you're getting ready for your third mm -hmm. and you go and tear I'm on my knee. I'm on my on my high horse I got my boys out there we're out there killing it I mean we just had lost the championship game mm. so I mean we weren't like bummed but we were bummed but we were still like we're the second best team like we should be able to coast in there this next year yeah we didn't win it but uh we went in the spring ball and it was like the third day of practice mm. first day with just like shells mm -hmm. shoulder pads and uh, I just got, like, too crazy. I was going up on a linebacker, and I was like, I'm going to dump him. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to make him look bad on camera. So I, like, go to, like, shove him over. He falls, but I just, like, take a crazy step, and my leg just, boop, mm -hmm. pops. You said it was inside drill? I think you told me that before. Yeah, it was, it was inside, inside drill. Inside. So you guys know inside drill, 
is no receivers. No receivers, no just run plays. Just linemen, linebackers, and maybe like a safety that comes in and plays in the box. So every lineman, while we do appreciate a good inside drill, yeah. you know, third day at camp wearing shells is tough. Yeah, it's like and stay on your feet type, but yeah. I was just, that was just like my personality back then. I was like, I'm just going to like try to like. And you had some young guys that you needed to go lay the law on. Yes, and I mean, I just wanted like then that to be on film so when these scouts did come by and sit in a film room with my coach and watch me practice and play they see that that guy's like right so you dog. you started having the idea that yeah. you're going to have a shot yeah, to try to play in the sure. league yeah junior year which you know that's so big i mean whether you're a, a young guy in high school wanting to play college mm -hmm. whether you're a young guy in college becoming an older uh, upperclassman wanting to play in the NFL or some type of pro having the intent like you were thinking about how it's going to look on film for scouts mm -hmm. in the third day of practice of your junior season oh, yeah. spring. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> but you look at a lot of kids, and we work with a lot of guys, and you're like, hey, who here wants to play college football? And they're like, well, if it happens, like if I get the chance. You know, and it's like, no. You need to have intent. You need to, to have a plan mm -hmm. and know how you're going to go <laughs> and get it. And so that when you're having practice and you have the option to take a playoff or do the bare minimum, mm -hmm. You say, "Hey, this is going to show up in my future." Yeah, I need the, to be the eye in the sky. In. Don't lie. So I was always like trying to put good stuff on. Film. Right. You can't play scared. You yeah. got hurt. I got hurt, and then um, it was April. Were you wearing knee braces? I was not. Okay. Yeah. What's the story there? I this day I was like, I'm going to spat my ankles today, and not wear knee braces. Because mm. when you spat your ankles, it puts more. Yep. And I yeah, it was recipe for disaster. Yeah. But. Yeah. Uh, Why weren't you wearing knee braces, though? Did you I just not have them? I, we did. I was just like, I don't, I don't feel like wearing them today. We're not <laughs> okay. like full. We're, it's not full pads. Yeah. I was like, I, we're going to be all on our feet. Everybody's going to be like staying up. Nobody's going to be hitting my knees and stuff. So I was like, I'm not going to wear yeah. knee braces in that one day. Mm -hmm. Well, I see down. some schools lately they not, make them wear not them. wearing them anymore. Really? So I, and for a while, it was every D1 team had have the knee wear braces them, yeah. mandatory. And you get used to them, right? There's a lot of kids probably watching who've never worn knee braces. Mm -hmm. Uh, I recommend wearing them. Yeah, I recommend them. But too, it does sure. seem like there's a, a more college teams today, and B, almost a ton of NFL teams not doing knee braces. Yeah. And the only thing I can think is, for one, there's probably some guys out there who thinks that maybe the stability starts to weaken, like mm -hmm. you start to lose that that kind of um, stability and strength you have with no support, and then too much support might start to wear away mm -hmm. at that. That's something I always thought of. Uh, no scientific stuff there. I'm not a doctor for you guys. But uh, but then also, for me, I, I got rid of my knee braces when I got to the pros because I thought that extra step was worth it. I feel like it's that, and I feel like people are playing smarter mm -hmm. at a higher level. Okay. And we don't want to be on the ground. You don't right. want to be on the ground. No. So people are trying harder to stay off the ground and away from people's knees. For sure. As for when you're younger, you're just out there just like. Yeah, it's more technical. Yeah. Also, you're only as safe as how good the guys are who are play around, around you. you. Yeah. And, the, you know, my O-line coach in college, uh, Mike Cavanaugh, who's at Syracuse now, mm -hmm. he always said, you know, great technique prevents injuries mm -hmm. for you and those around mm -hmm. you. And when you're not playing, when the guys around you aren't very good, you yeah, better be wearing yeah, your knee braces. You That's knee when you get rolled on. up. Yeah. And it's just, it doesn't happen as much in the NFL. It really doesn't. It doesn't. Um, so let's talk more about that then, the transition. You recovered from Okay, the so yeah. Uh, they were like, normal recovery times, like, you know, five months to eight months. And I was like, all right, nah, I can't do that. I was like, that means I'd have to miss my whole season, my whole junior season. Right. And I was like, I can't do that. So I was just like, killing rehab. Came back. How do you kill rehab? Just just went like super hard. Like yeah. I was pushing it, pushing it to the limit. Reps and I came back and only missed the first two games of my junior season. Yeah. And was uh, all American, all conference, and all that stuff. Wow. On nine games. As a junior, As coming a junior, off the knee. Coming That's off great. the knee, and that looked. I mean, I guess that looked good to scouts too. Like, oh, he he did. He came off ACL four and a half months. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I did that. That was junior year. Uh, didn't go to the championship, and then uh, senior year comes around. This is a big year for me, so I just balled out to what I could do, you know. All conference, all American again, first team. Two times. Two times. Oh boy. Well, it was three times all conference. Yeah. But only two times all American. It was hard to repeat, 
for some reason, like, it's just that the kind of, like, a thing out there. Like, you know, they uh, if somebody wins the Heisman as a junior and then plays as a senior, they're not the favorite to yeah, win again. Yeah, it's exactly. just, like, the people don't want to vote for somebody. To Twice in a row or yeah. three times in a row. They're like, yeah. all right, we got to get somebody else. And then they changed. They should have. I should have been all American my sophomore year. But they, yeah. I got snubbed on that. Yeah, they give the older guys, you know, the little bit of extra credit. So, so when it... Um, from what you know about D1 programs, mm -hmm. when it comes to what they pay for, uh, what you know, meals, this kind of stuff, what were some of the key differences at a D1 AA level uh, versus what you understand about the D1 level? Uh, well, the school I went to, um, we didn't have like separate dining halls for like athletes and mm -hmm. you know regular students. We just had like one dining hall. Yeah, and it was um, the food wasn't like incredible, like. We didn't get a subway or like any sort of like fast food on campus until my senior year. Um, it's just kind of like buffet style food. Not a bad thing. Yeah, but it was being in like, Alabama was it like southern yeah, type of. Food I mean, they, it was all right. The <laughs> breakfast like was the best, but just like going down the road to Auburn, I had friends that played football there, and I could like go up there and like be treated like a king yeah you know and like yeah we, like, you want to go to this dining hall or this dining hall like, either <laughs> one i'm options. like yeah they got <laughs> options and then it's just um it's just it was a little bit cooler at the bigger school they pay f they pay for your schooling pay for school. pay for your books mm -hmm. housing or you had to yeah. stay in the dorms stay in the dorms the whole time i mean if you wanted to live off campus they wouldn't pay for you it pay for the extra you okay. have to pay that so i stayed on campus but the place i stayed in my junior and senior year was like for the upperclassmen, okay. it was kind of like swanky, like condo style type yeah. things, like two bedroom type things, but like separated. It was cool. Cool. That's cool. So then you graduate, two time All American, D one double A. Were you know were you ranked in a way that agents were hitting you up? Were you, I had, did you have a draft? Uh, there were there were profile? agents hitting me up um, my senior year, um, but I couldn't like sign with them or nothing. Or I could only like meet with them, I guess. Right. Um, and then I uh, played an All Star game, the Raycom All Star game in Montgomery, mm. and that's where a lot of scouts were. And so, guys, understand? There's the Senior Bowl, Senior Bowl, and then East West Shrine game, East West, and then the and then like NFL PA, yeah, and all these other crazy little probably bowls on the same level. Yeah, as, yeah. As each just other. like you get a bunch of D one, one A guys in there, but just like. Just not as big names. Yeah. And then um, played in that game when that was finished. That's when I uh, chose my agent. Shout out to Derek. Um, then he, I started training. And I just trained like locally in Montgomery. Oh, you stayed, uh, yeah, stayed in Montgomery? Montgomery and Did trained. you train with like the college staff? or I trained with my strength and conditioning coach. Okay, cool. And then as far as like offensive line worked, I just used my offensive line coach. Yeah. A lot of guys do that. Yeah, I wasn't gonna go out and spend money. I mean, yeah. I didn't have no money to spend. I wasn't gonna get like in debt with a with an agent either. Cause right. You never know how it's gonna pan out. Yeah. So I just kept it like simple. Right. Some agents, depending on the player, mm -hmm. the pro the projections, they'll in order to be competitive to sign him, they'll offer to pay for all of his training. Like room and If board they think he's gonna get drafted. Yeah, for sure. And then there's kind of levels. And you get to a spot where if you're projected to go free agent, mm -hmm. that typically an, the agent knows that they don't have to pay for all that to get you. Mm -hmm. It's more of a buyer's market. You're going to have to, or a seller's market or whatever. You're going to have to come in and, and really want yeah, a better agent. Exactly. So he can get you just for being a good agent. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, then you kind of have to cover your own training or have him pay for it and then pay him back. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the guys out there aren't having to pay it back. Yeah. But uh, but that was smart of you to train at home because yeah. I I think I get pretty good results. Obviously, it's right. nice to go spend twenty grand. Yeah, and, and have like full, cobble, like room and board, have all this cool yeah. stuff and gear and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you still gotta like put your hand in the dirt yeah, and ball. pass block. Yeah, and you gotta run be strong. And stuff. You gotta be like, flexible. Yeah, be fast. yeah, exactly. All that other stuff. How'd pro really day go for you? Pro day was pretty cool. Um, had a bunch of friends come out. It was at the school. A bunch of friends came out. It was like in the evening. But how'd you do? Uh, uh, I didn't bench press because I had like some nerve damage in my arm, and I was rehabbing on that. But uh, ran like five, four forty. wasn't super fast. Pretty um, fast for six eight. Yeah. And how much were you weighing? Three forty one. Three forty one. Three forty one. What do you weigh now? Three fifty one maybe. Really? Yeah. You don't look it. You carry that pretty well. I can. You carry that pretty good. well. I like, I like hearing that. But uh, <laughs> pro day. Uh, 
I ran my short shuttle. I can't even remember my numbers. But they were pretty good yeah. for like my size. And if you know who Gil Brandt is, the NFL draft like reporter, he's okay, like one yeah, of the yeah. most popular. He like wrote up a whole story about it. And nice. like out of all the guys that, you know, had their pro day there, like my name like stood out and stuff like that. Was the guy that was protecting yeah, that was the, the guy. And that was pretty cool. And then like a couple days later, um, the Falcons worked me out in Montgomery. And we had just built a new stadium. So it was just me and him out there just doing drills for about 30 minutes. And he was like, yeah, he's like, we're really injured. We want you to come out here, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you just keep working and uh, be ready for a phone call. Cool. And then draft day comes around. I had went home and uh, just hung out with my friends and my family and uh, sat through the first three days. I think the last day I had got, uh, the Raiders were on the phone with me towards their last pick. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm about to go to Oakland. And they didn't draft me. <laughs> yep. And then the Falcons called when the uh, the draft was over. And like, we want we want to sign you, blah, blah, blah. We'll send your uh, contract over to your agent and stuff. And by Monday, I was signed to the to the uh, Falcons. And they were like, you need to report for uh, rookie mini camp on uh, like May, mid-May, something like that. And I was like, all right. Rock and roll. There, 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 there it was. Yeah. So yeah. you went to the rookie mini camp. Rookie you got mini in the camp. camp. Uh, Did rookie you go practice mini squad or right to the team? I went. Well, there were four undrafted free guy, uh, free agents that made the team, and that's like rare. Oh, the O linemen? No, there were two oh, O linemen. Me and another tackle. Yeah. And then two linebackers, and that's like really rare, I guess. But this other tackle, he's like, a, oh, he's like 26 when he uh -huh. went in there. So he was a lot more. I was like more raw. So they put me on the team, then cut me, brought in another vet just to like help me develop or whatever and i spent like the whole season well to the like the last six games of the season on the private squad and then the giants um when you're a free agent or when you're a practice squad guy you're like a free agent basically still right so they were like we're gonna we're gonna take him and activate him because we got we need some people to play and then yeah. the falcons were like nah we're going to activate them. Because mm. so, they get first rider refusal, right? So yeah. you're on the Falcons practice squad. Yeah. Somebody else comes in and says, we want him. If I could have chose. If they do take you, then you could choose. Yeah. Okay. And my agent was like, we think you should stay in Atlanta. I think I should. I mean, <laughs> think hey, of it now. Hindsight. <laughs> who knows what would have been who happening knows? if I'd have been in New York. If I'd have went to New York, I could still play right now. You who never knows? know. Who but knows? everything happens for a reason. Yeah. But uh, I stayed in Atlanta, came in the next year. Didn't make the team, but they wanted to put me on practice squad. Was on the practice squad for only like four weeks, and they're like, we're going to cut you. And I was like, all right. They cut me, and I was only sitting at my house for like a day before I was on a plane to Washington for their practice squad. So that's what that's a whole other. Redskins? Redskins was there. Was there for like four weeks. Got like used to their system and stuff. Thought I, was, I mean, it's crazy. You get in there, you think you're doing good, like, you don't really have no complaints. You're not really messing up because you're starting to learn. Like a lot of the terminology is the same across the league. Right. So you're starting to like learn, and you think you're doing good, and then, bam. Right. We need you to bring in your playbook. Numbers game. Yeah, numbers game. And then so after that happened, Baltimore called me, and Michael Orr had just well not Michael Orr. Michael Orr had already went to uh, Tennessee, but um, Baltimore was like. Yeah, we're gonna put you on a practice squad, and I had been cool. And that's another thing. I, in hindsight, I probably should have went to the Ravens because their offensive line coach had been hitting me up, mad like throughout the season. Like, not like I mean, we were just talking. Like he was just like, he'd send me like little DVDs of like his training stuff. Mm. Like he was really upset that I didn't go there, and mm. I kind of regret that. Dang. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I went to Baltimore and like immediately like was good like chilling bam we were doing this doing that uh doing good at practice i was working with juan after practice and stuff like that and then tennessee was like we want to get him because michael Orr just got hurt mm. and the ravens weren't gonna match the offer i think they just wanted to keep me on the practice squad okay. for the next season so but they didn't want to yeah they let me so i went to tennessee and that was when i played there jason pierre paul Played against the Colts, Jaguars. What was the last team we played against? Giants, Colts, Jaguars. There was one more team. Can't remember. But um, 
Yeah. Played there. That's when I got fined. Go into the off season. They draft. Uh, they draft a tackle in the third round. And they gave him like so many chances. Mm. They had him at tackle when he sh definitely should have been a guard. Mm. So I'm like competing with somebody that they drafted that should be a guard. But they're not like it, it's, it's a numbers game. It's weird. Yeah. And when a team drafts somebody and invests a lot of money in them, like mm -hmm. I've seen it, every free agent, and it might be a bias thing. Maybe it's even similar, like a walk on versus a scholarship mm -hmm. guy. But there's a bias where they'll give him the benefit of the doubt, yeah. the opportunity. Yes. Like, they, they want so bad to be right they, about somebody. They, they don't, don't want the guy, the undrafted free exactly. agent, to come in. So they, they were giving him so many chances. They'd put him at right tackle. They'd put him at left tackle, just back and forth. And I'm like, all right, I'm trying to, like, etch my way in here. And then they had a couple other, like, three more tackles in there. It was crazy. There was so much competition going on. And then they cut me right before training camp. Like, they we, the, we came in the first day and did our – conditioning test kill the conditioning test yeah. you need to get cut after the conditioning test I was like what I was like if I'd have known I wouldn't even done this I was like I came out here and ran this and I'm like tired I'm like <sighs> and then we eat lunch uh, we have our eat. meeting and at the end of the meeting they cut me and I was uh, like oh man and then by that time I'm like all right I'm getting tired of football football is I mean I just was getting tired of like, just like, I mean, the heart, once you do it for so long and then you just, it's like a heartbreak. You, you're in love with the game, but it just keeps like breaking your heart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're putting your all into it. Sure. Every day you're, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do. I had learned from Tony Gonzalez, like you got to find your, uh, your, uh, niche, niche, your, uh, your routine. Mm -hmm. And I had like found a routine, but it just wasn't quite Damn. it. And I was getting cut, and I was just like, I called my parents. I called a buddy out here that I was talking to a bunch, and he, we talked a bunch, and he was like, bro, he's like, whenever you want to come out here, he was like, I'll be ready for you to come out here. So I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this one more shot. And then the Bills were like, all right, we want you to come for a uh, training camp. And I was competing up there. And another, another situation with a drafted guy and an undrafted guy, this guy clearly could not, I mean, he was like mentally, mm. like recently, the within worst. the past like two years, there was a story. They found him in the middle of uh, like a plantation up in somewhere, like half naked. Just running off. Just like running around. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, what? Right. I was like, y'all. <laughs> so, and then I got cut there and then I was like, all right, I'm done. And then I went home, funny. packed my stuff and moved out here. Yeah. It's so funny going like because i was i was in a similar situation where i was with a team and there was uh, guys i was competing against and, and there's a guy they they kept and uh for me it's frustrating to be a player who really enjoyed the knowledge of the game mm -hmm. and then going against somebody who clearly can't pick up the the Just, angles yeah and the blitzes and the plays asking for help you know and then it's like just you know maybe they're more physical or bigger whatever it is or they got drafted and they like them um it's really frustrating yeah. to have to compete against that because in college there's no cutting there's you know the guys aren't coming and going yeah it's like you it's just like get the best guys yeah. play and then if you end up being better they might play you it's right. crazy it's crazy absolutely <sighs> so one thing that I think people would be curious about is because like everybody's seen hard knocks, mm -hmm. they have seen like oh, the yeah, cut we guy. On we were on hard knocks. Oh, you were on hard knocks. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, Did you get any clips then? Like, were you on the featured at all, or did you get any clips? Just a small little clip of us fighting. Yeah. Me yeah, and the other like tackle. That. Like, there was this freshman, or not freshman, but this uh, undrafted guy. It was my second year. The undrafted guy. He was like this big, strong kid, and like, he was just like being. I don't. He. I don't know. We just didn't like him. And, like, one play, like, the camera did, like, a little slow-motion clip, and we were just, like, whee, whee, punching this dude. And then, like, I watched that. The, uh, the, the narrator was, like, as tensions get high. And yeah. Blood, like, it was crazy. It was cool. It's good fire. TV. Yeah, it was good TV. But what else is good TV is when they, you know, show up in the middle of the night with a cut guy and yeah. get your playbook. But for me, that wasn't what it was like. Uh -huh. But I think it's different from each team. So, in general, what can you tell the people out there – what is it like at that moment when you're getting cut? What happens? It's like you, they, everybody knows who the cut guy is. The cut guy. Like Grim there's Reaper. A, there's a, the, the Grim Reaper. He's got one everybody, job. everybody knows exactly who it is. And like, you don't want to see him. You don't want to see him. And like he could be like walking towards 
you and a group of people and everybody just kind of like stops and <laughs> doesn't know what to do because yeah. you don't know who he's about to walk to because yeah. everybody in the room is, you ain't safe. Everybody in the room is, can get cut. Yeah. So we're all just like, stand, but that's not how it happened to me. They, I, they called me on the phone mm. and told me to come in when I got cut. Right. Well, usually like the cut guy, if there is a guy who's, it's his job. It's normally done like training camp. It's because everybody's, everybody's getting cut. There's yeah. 20 cuts in one day. Yeah. But if you're, but I've seen it. It's yeah. It sucks. Like we'll and that's be, how I went down. It'll be like a break. And you have like some time off. You'll just be chilling, playing some video games. You'll see the cut guy like looming, just like <laughs> slithering on through. The and air then, goes out of the room. Yeah, right? like, and everybody looks around, and then he'll come back a couple minutes later, and somebody's following him, and then that's yeah. when you say your goodbyes. Because <laughs> you never know. You might see. You might Absolutely. go against him next week. You might see him later on in the season. You might. He might be starting. Right. Three weeks down the line. That's True. how crazy it is. Yeah, things really change fast. It's, they're so limited with 53 players mm -hmm. and 10 practice squad. They're so limited that they have to be constantly be mm -hmm. making moves. Always. And I don't think people get that. You know, people, everybody looks at the front, yep. 25 guys, yep. but that back this, 10 yeah. is just constantly in flux. Um, and the other thing you'll see, I think, in an offensive line standpoint, I've noticed and, and talked to a lot of pros about this because I work with guys who are on the bubble mm -hmm. a lot uh, when they're in town and they go going out for workouts. Um, a lot of teams will get a handful of dudes as backups and just want to keep them, even if they're not as good as the guys coming mm -hmm. in and out. They'll kind of almost fall in love with the guy uh, and then just want to keep him on the roster. Did you ever see those kind of guys? I don't, we should almost make up a word for that. But like, I had some friends um, who I knew weren't all that talented or all mm -hmm. that smart or all that physical. But, and really, I'm just thinking of a couple guys. Um, but they, every year they would just make that team as a backup. And it's so they knew the system. They're I feel comfortable. Like, like an insurance. Yeah, it it's is. Like we'd rather have somebody that knows everything right. than a guy that Somebody's barely. Been here. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, yeah, yeah. There's those guys, and that's a lucky thing to do. Yeah. Not, no hating, yeah. not hating at all. If I you, wouldn't mind being. If that you can guy. get that guy, if you can get to be that if guy, if I could be that a, guy, I would love to be that. That's guy. a career. Ride the bench and make career backup. Six years, man. Absolutely, absolutely. That'd be nice. Um, one thing on the cut guy is that I actually the guy came to me thinking I was somebody else. So like it was like that cut guy looming like the Grim Reaper with his thing and then come over and you know uh, changing names to hide identities but he was like you know are you Craig and I was Craig. like no <laughs> Craig's over there <laughs> that's not me and you probably like yeah. oh, God. and I got cut a week later damn but I got to play the preseason game you yeah know, that was cool uh, by myself as the as the backup you know as like the third guy I was played the whole game by myself but um that's anyways cool. so. Talking about the difference between college at, 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 at Alabama State and then, boom, NFL. Like, how extreme was the difference? And what are some of the Just major differences? The, uh, well, the level of competition yeah. is obviously a lot different going from it's faster, my school. Better, better, faster, stronger. We, at our conference, the level of competition wasn't even like at a PWI like Alabama or Auburn and right. stuff. Like, if we played them, we would get crushed. Sure. Like, minus a few people on the team, like the elite. Yeah. Me's and my center. Yeah. Once quarterback. Was, every team had a couple. Yeah. But we would, we probably would have, but it wouldn't just, it wouldn't work because yeah. the other eight or 18 guys on the team wouldn't be able to, like, match up. Right. So, like, an Alabama guy going from here to the NFL, the level of competition doesn't really sure. change smaller. That much. But from Alabama State to the NFL, it's like you skip a whole like. Right. So how did you deal with that? I, I just survived. I, dealt, I survived. Like it was hard. Yeah. It was really hard. Just like because I, I had to get in the weight room more. I had to you know start, you know really taking the weight room seriously. I mean I took it kind of seriously in college, but I was just always that much better than people, mm -hmm. and stronger then. So that was one thing I really had to take seriously was the weight room, but just like. You're out there just playing with, like, I go from playing with kids all my age within, like, three or four years to playing with, like, men that have, like, children yep. that it's, are only, like, big. eight years younger than me, maybe. Yeah, grown, you know what grown I'm saying? Men. Grown men. Yeah. Like, that's, like, my dad's strength. Right. That's, like, daddy's strength. Totally. Like, my dad could probably beat me up right now if he really wanted to. <laughs> dads have a natural Yes, strength exactly. <laughs> and so it was, like, playing out there playing with a bunch of dads. Yeah. It was a weird transition because yeah. in, in college, everybody's the same age. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not way older. Maybe no. once in a while, like, so, uh, someone went exactly. on a mission or something. But uh, in general, about the same age. And you get there, and it's like, dude, this guy is freaking 34. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was 21, right. 22, playing against a guy that was 35. Yeah, and they just know the tricks. And they, like, we're playing next to Tony Gonzalez. That's like playing next to somebody that 
I grew up watching right. like. But he was playing drag. and you were in diapers, like almost. He was in college when I was like in middle school. Yeah. Or just about. Right. Yeah. Dang. dang totally. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So Long being career. able to play nice, I'm like, wow. Yeah. I'm actually out here playing with this old man. Yeah. So now we're working with kids. You're helping us out at the camps and clinics. Mm -hmm. We're having a good time. Mm -hmm. Let's just say because, you know, the same advice doesn't work for every kid. Mm -hmm. Right. And you might have a few things, but thinking about what you might have done differently, let's just say that seventh grade TJ is sitting right here. Uh, what would you tell him as far as tips? What would you do differently? Not even necessarily regret, but in 2019, if you're seventh grade TJ, what would you do a little differently? What would you focus on? I would tell myself to focus on the weight room mm. and focus on, you know, just like training. And yeah. if you really want to play football, like, you should really focus on playing on football. Right. And, like, really dial into that because if you just practice something enough, you can get really good at it. Absolutely. And the technology today. I mean, yeah, think, the technology. Think about all the too. film you could watch. Exactly. You For 100 watch. bucks a year, you get NFL Game Pass. Exactly. Like, back then, we didn't have people who had services of training right. linemen. Sure. We were just out there, just, like, doing whatever. Yeah. Imagine if we had Line Pro in 2007. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. It's just that the lineman uh, technique isn't like natural human movements for the it's most not. part. And you really, it takes thousands of reps mm -hmm. to make something second nature. Exactly. And you can tell when someone's had that. Mm -hmm. And they're, t you know, at the time that you and I were going through college and pros, is almost nobody had it from a high school age. Mm -hmm. So everybody had to learn in college. Mm -hmm. And then you actually had guys in the NFL who weren't technicians. Yeah, and they still were today, just like... There's guys who can just win without a whole lot of technique. Exactly. But it's getting better and better uh, because these defensive ends are, you know, guys who 20 years ago would have been running backs. Mm -hmm. Now they're now it's Von Miller playing DN. Yeah. And so now we've been forced to get better and better. And more, and come, more become more athletic and right. more. Speaking of guys that don't win, off like athletic, I can name one guy that just like. It like it. irks me. To watch. Don't do I'm it. Not say it. Don't do it. But it just like I mean I'm not. I mean I love the guy. You're gonna get but, more fights, TJ. But just uh, it's frustrating. It, it is frustrating because I was like, you could. Yeah. His, uh, his, I just don't think his body could move like that. Now. Right. He's an older guy. Sure. But I just don't feel like his body. Like, yeah. But he he's just been doing it for so long. Yep. He finds a way to win. Well, a lot of it's getting your foot in the door too. Like if you there's 32 NFL teams, they all need good linemen. Mm -hmm. If you have film and you've won and you've like no matter how you've done it, and if you won and you and you're started, yeah, and, like you get cut or you've become available. There's 31 other teams that, that are going to try be, you well, out. Yeah, gonna, we, yeah, it's you're, crazy. It's, it's a big name thing. Um, one piece of tackle play. There's some guys like to set more laterally and try to get the width of the pocket like an angle set, mm -hmm. and some guys believe more in like the strictly vertical. Where do you stand on that? I like. Vertical setting, but actually kicking because right. there's a lot of like in college, a lot of schools they do like the back pedal. Oh, uh, like yeah, okay. Instead of drop set, instead of kicking vertical, right. I like kicking vertical to kick, yeah. and hold space. I think that's good. Technique. Holding space is really good because you just don't want to leave your guard. Right. Okay. So, so your inside hand. Yeah, I'm all, uh, I always like yourself. holding space. Yeah, but what if there's nobody there? Not so much of a deal, know. right? But if there's a threat, if there's a protecting threat, yourself I'm a from space. a pick. That's so I like I like going vertical. Yeah. I always liked. I would have liked to play tackle. I felt like uh, it's it's just a nice, simple setup. There's not yeah. too many variations. Not, really, not too much. There's times where things get crazy. They can get really waspy out there. Yeah, <laughs> it can get waspy. <laughs> it can get really waspy it can out get there. Waspy. Well, uh, and then the other one, you know, I saw. I'm in a Facebook group of O-line coaches, and they were having a debate about outside hand first punch or inside hand first punch or both hands. That what should you coach? That's actually a, that was one thing I liked about the offensive line coach in Buffalo. He was so you're telling me that there's different NFL coaches coaching it differently. Yeah, like what was his name? Cromer. Can't remember his first name. Bob Cromer. He was big off like alternate punches and like he he like when we're doing pass pro drills, he'd like fake it with his hand. Mm. Get them to do something, and bam, and that worked so good. It was one. so crazy because you would just like flash with this. They'd do a swipe like this. Right. Their arms would be all over here. Yep. And this hand just comes like out of nowhere, and it would just shock yeah. them. So crazy. I so I that. was really a big fan of like setting Pat Hill from Fresno State. He mm -hmm. was my coach in uh, Atlanta. He was big on 
this, this, yeah. this, this. He always worked with us after practice with the little hand shields, like swipe punch, right? Swipe punch, stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, you know, that's how that's how I commented on the post. What I said was, it's gonna be different. Mm -hmm. It's in different situations, down in distance, different depths of dropping. Mm -hmm. Uh, is the guy working a speed move? Is he working a power move? Is he working an inside move? Um, so there's different situations, but you could, it's like a pitcher. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, con you're setting, setting, setting. It's like a pitcher versus a batter. Uh, you might set more aggressively and then back off. You might set aggressively mm -hmm. like a jump set on first and 10 and stay with them. Um, yeah. You know, you might, it's third and 15. You know, you could act like you're setting aggressive and flash that hand, wait for him to swipe at and it and bang. pull it yep. and put it back. But for me, it's like, those those movements aren't uh, once you do pull the hand or when your hands are punching too. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids would think, you know, I'm out there playing little ninja because I'm seeing him swipe my hand and I'm moving it. It's not a thought; it's a reaction. It's a, it's a, reaction. a feeling. Yeah. And when my hands find the body, whether it's one replacing, mm -hmm. I got to find leverage. Mm -hmm. If I'm not lifting him, if he's lifting me, I got to get back underneath him. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something that we're working more and more into our training and you can see it in the kids that they're able to feel mm -hmm. that. So it's not a feeling. I mean, it is a feeling. It's not a thought, yeah. right? So I think that's huge. Well, that's good stuff. Is there anything else that you would tell an eighth grader or a 10th grader or a 12th grader? You already said you get in the weight room. Uh, you know, Flex, I always stretching, add stretching, flexibility. That's what I was going to say. That's a big thing. And uh, focusing um, on grades. Grades, of course. Core strength. A big Absolutely. Thing. Uh, upper body strength. Core strength is is really um, ignored yeah. a lot by the big boys. You know, because it's tough. That. It's tough to get core if strength you, when you're. You get core strength, you can stay like in that football position longer. I guess you yeah. got a big stomach, you can't do right. that. Well, you know, we're you got to be good with your feet. Got to be good with your hands, right? But if your hands and your feet aren't communicating because of a good core, mm -hmm. you get to leaning, you get to lean you get falling in. over. That you, you posted that video. Uh, the other day, uh, the, the the guard, right? He was, uh, you know where he came from? I, I don't even. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole like. nother story. I posted a, an Instagram. Video. I think they tried to. If you're not following oh, Line Pro goodness. FB, I'm posting just little. I think they tried to in like the second round. Yeah, but hey, that just shows you too <laughs> that even some of the best guys get caught. Leaning, get caught up leaning. Get yeah. caught in bad position, mm -hmm. right? He got caught super hard. I, I do say around. I say a lot. We got to train for perfection, mm -hmm. but the crap hits the fan sometimes. Yeah, it does. And when you train for perfection and the crap hits the fan for both players, like, you're going to recover better uh, when you're when you're yeah. really focused on balance, uh, and then that really that good strong mm -hmm. core. So that's good. From TJ, guys, focus on your core strength to be a better lineman when you're six foot eight mm -hmm. or six foot six or even if you're six foot one or five foot nine. Appreciate you coming in, Big Dog. Yeah. Appreciate you being part yeah. of this. Line Pro. Glad to be a part uh, of it. Really, my vision is I want this thing to grow and be owned by all linemen everywhere. right? And so it's one of those big, crazy goals. Mm -hmm. Don't know how it's going to happen, but I want it to be the community brand of linemen. And for me, it's about the positivity, about the growth, about improving, mm -hmm. about achieving, setting and achieving goals. Uh, and if we can even just help a couple kids out there, I'll be happy. And it means a lot to me to have other former players come and give back in this way, too. So appreciate you coming yes, in. Thank Let's keep you. up the good work. Yep. We'll see you guys next time on Line Mentality.